Samsung is finally gearing up to release a wireless charger for its American Galaxy S3 customers. But suppose you're not the waiting type. Suppose you want wireless charging on your Galaxy S3 right now. Okay. I'm Michael Fisher. This is Pocket Now. We'll show you how to do it. Now, because this mod depends on exploiting the wireless charging hardware found in the old Palm Pixie, you're going to need some specialized equipment. But it's easily come by on Amazon or eBay, and it shouldn't run you any more than 30 to 40 bucks tops. We should also mention here that this mod comes to us via an XDA developer's thread by member Android94301, and that PocketNow is not liable for any warranty violations, device losses, or explosions that might occur. We've thrown the source link in the description of this video if you want more detailed information and some excellent pointers and tips. Here's what you're going to need. Copper tape, rare earth magnets or small metal disks, a Palm Pixie inductive battery door, a Palm Touchstone charger, a Palm USB cable with AC adapter. Yes, it has to be the Palm cable because the Touchstone has a finicky port that only accepts certain shapes. Don't cheap out on this. Tape and your Galaxy S3. The first thing we want to do is pull the tape off the back of the Pixie case and set it aside. Then we're going to gently remove and set aside the circuit board, silver metallic tape, coil, and the metal disks. Next, to preserve the positions of the disks and the coil center, we cut a crude template out of paper and marked their positions. You can do this more precisely with a drill and some shears if you prefer, but we want our wireless charging now, so we're already cutting corners. This probably won't come back to bite us in the butt, right? Next, we pull the battery cover off our Galaxy S3 and insert the Pixie's charging coil upside down in this orientation. We secure the circuit board to the battery cover with some tape. You can use hot glue or super glue later on, once you've decided on positioning. And then we fold the connector ribbon back on itself, like so, so we have access to the contacts. Next, we'll drop our paper template over the coil to give us position information for our magnets. Now, if you're worried about messing up the phone's compass with magnetic fields, you should use the metal disks we pried from the Pixie before. We're using magnets in this example, so we'll be sure to check the polarity to make sure we're putting them down in an attractive, not a repulsive, attitude. You can check polarity and positioning on the touchstone itself. Now, you'll want to do this repeatedly as you're taping the magnets in to make sure the alignment is good. And also, very important, make sure the magnets aren't too thick, otherwise you'll never get the battery door back on the phone. Once the magnets are in position, we'll bring our silver tape back from the Palm Pixie pile and re-tape it onto the coil, thusly. Then we secure it with more scotch tape, like so. Now at this point, you should consider trimming away all the excess tape so you don't feel like a slob, and so this mod starts to look just a little less amateurish. If you're a real pro, you can bring the black palm label back into play here, but be mindful, again, of the thickness of the battery door. It still needs to attach to the phone, after all. Speaking of the phone, now's a good time to line up our components so we can keep an eye on the big picture. We're trying to get the charging terminals on the phone to connect to the terminals on our palm ribbon. To do that, we need to use our copper tape. We'll cut the copper tape into manageable lengths, ranging from about an eighth to a half inch in width, so we can create two big landing zones on the phone, one for positive, one for negative. Obviously, we'll take care that the two zones don't touch. To get a good contact on the phone's connectors, we'll use a blunt object to tamp the tape firmly down on them. Careful, though, they're fragile. If you have trouble later with connectivity, you might want to try putting the tape in copper side down. The adhesive side may not be as conductive. We had to try several times before we got a firm connection. A voltmeter is helpful if you have one. At this point, maybe we'll take the battery out of the phone so we don't blow our kitchen up. Maybe do this beforehand, folks. Once we have our phone side landing pads ready, we'll move to the battery cover and prepare them similarly using the same copper tape, also making sure to keep positive and negative separate, and making sure to line them up so that when the back is replaced, everything will touch like it needs to. We doubled up the tape in the overlapping spots to ensure contact. When all's said and done, you should have something that looks something like this, only hopefully prettier, because this is ugly as sin. We'll resist the urge to judge a book by its cover, though, Let's snap the battery back in and slap the battery cover back on. You will notice an unsightly bulge on ours, and that's due to those thick magnets we used. If you go with the metal disks from the Pixie instead of thicker magnets, that shouldn't be an issue. While the phone is powering up, we'll plug in our touchstone and say a quick prayer before dropping our Galaxy S3 on the touchstone 
for its first wireless charging experience. Yes! That's going to do it for today's tutorial. If you tried it on your Galaxy S3, leave a comment. Let us know how it went and leave tips for other folks who give it a try. Thanks for watching. Follow us in the links in the description below, and we'll see you next time.